Hi folks, Russ here again having some more Daisy Lever Gun fun and today I want to talk to you about what I use as a core gun whenever I do some of my custom restorations and modifications here. Um, I say custom restorations because after all I don't restore things to their original luster. I like to do things that are unique and maybe haven't um, haven't been a common idea of people because well it just is nice to get something different going on once in a while. Now you've seen a lot of the um, videos that I've done about wide frame daisies you know those model 95s, 96, um, 98, 99 you know whatever whatever uh, the 499s I, I tend not to work too much on those and customize them because I like to try to keep some of those nicer guns in their original condition but whenever I have something that I want to do I look for a gun that's usable in or at least repairable but not in too good a shape so just how bad a shape can some of them be here's a good example I'm going to show you what I have here in front of me parts of a gun I just took apart it's a model 96 and this one um, well as you can see from the front here it's really rusty and pitted all the way around. I even knocked some of the rust off of it. Uh, I exposed some of the uh, roll stamping here. You can see where it says Model 96. There's a reg number on there. And uh, it says um, Rogers, Arkansas on it. The rear sight, if you can see this, um, the elevator's missing from it. And there's a lot of rust on both sides and on the bottom and you know, it looks like there's still part of a cocoon or something inside there um, inside of the gun see if we can get a good look at this it still has the abutment down inside there can you see that and it has the uh, abutment washer against it that's good because we won't have to fabricate anything and try to get one of those in there but this gun, this is this the receiver, and <clears throat> if you look at the front here, the uh, front sight is missing. So I'll either change that to a different type of sight, or I've been able to salvage from a destroyed gun uh, one of the front sights that they use on on this particular model, and we might reinstall that. The um, shot tube inside. It's one of those um, bottle cap type shot tubes and it has what I like to call the spoon because that's what covers up whenever you install this. The spoon as you're rotating either opens or closes the loading hole here. It's pretty bad also. Um, there's rust and pits. It looks like there's some uh, green corrosion around probably where they brazed that bottle cap onto the tube. Other than that, it's not in too bad a condition. Inside, actually, it's... Uh, let me see if we can... Uh, can't really get too, too good of a look in there, but I had a light in it earlier. And it doesn't look too bad inside. Could be cleaned out. I don't know that I'm going to reuse this inside the gun, though, for the project. I'll probably end up using a Model 25 shot tube. Um, these are good. They're nice replacements if you need one, but uh, if I'm going to do something crazy with this gun, I might want to change that out. The, um, the buttstock, this is the original configuration, the Monte Carlo type stock. Uh, they call it that because it denotes this hump on the top. It does not have a cheat piece. Um, I don't know that I'll add one, but uh, if not, we'll just leave it the way it is. It's pretty rough. It has a few dings in it, a lot of scratches. The finish is coming off of it. So I'm going to reuse this. It does it does have the trigger spring on there, which is nice. The um, spring retainer is 
reusable. These seldom go bad. I ha I do have one that did did go bad on another gun, and it's only because whenever they installed it, they did a bad job of the whoever worked on the gun. It, this goes inside here like this. They had it cocked and tried to force it, and so it ate its way. It ate two big grooves in the spring retainer. But this spring retainer is reusable. Doesn't look too awful bad. Here's the uh, original trigger. Again, it's in good shape. It has have bluing on it. And what I find more often than not is corrosion or at least some wear and pitting and rust on the bottom of the gun. And you can expect that because this is the part that comes in contact with your finger. And, of course, the oils and salts and so forth from your hand are going to uh, make that rusty. I have to excuse the dirt I have here. This gun would have had this kind of a forearm that was missing. I have uh, one or two extras of these, and so I'll probably end up using this forearm. However, what it needs, you see the way the front of this goes? This goes in here like this. And the screws hold the, in these holes on either side, hold the back of it. But what holds the front of it is there's supposed to be a little L-shaped bracket on the bottom of here. And it goes inside of that. What that looks like on an original gun is something like this. I have a receiver here that still has one. Something like this. So that whenever, whenever that goes on there, that hook in the front keeps the front from uh, front of the forearm from falling down. So what I've done in the past, of course, is fabricate one of these and attach it to the bottom of the barrel assembly, and that's what we're going to have to do again for this one. If I re if I use this particular style of forearm, and I probably will. So, how bad can some of these be? If I'm going to tear into them and not try to maintain the integrity of the original gun, I'll usually use a piece that's going to need a lot of work. This one isn't the worst I've done, but it's going to take a lot of work to get it to a nice looking condition again. And I'll make a few changes to it along the way. Okay, this is Russ. Uh, thanks for tuning in. If you get a chance, don't forget to subscribe. And we'd love to hear from you. Have a great night.